the next topic is actually also connected with the titles. So, you know, we want Mike to be the GOAT in the EuroLeague, right? So we're here with Eric to find him the best team, you know, to bring him to the top. You're on an expiring contract. You know, you said that it might be your last contract. So we are about to find you. You know, we are going to make your job easy this summer. You don't need to, 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 to have any second thoughts. We will find you the best spot to reach your goal, to become the GOAT, and also to enjoy your experience for the last contract. So, Eric, who do you got for, for Mike? For me, I say um, there's no place like home. You know, where kind of Mike kind of came into his own. Um, I think Panathinaikos <sighs> is the place. I think none is on a last year of his contract. I think Mike James could slide right in there. I think he'd be perfect in Ottoman system. You know, he'd have that freedom. He'd have to play his, his game, his style. Um, he'd have an excellent big man in the sort. Him and the sort in the pick and roll combination would be beautiful to watch. Um, you could also get him off ball sometimes, free him up, allow him to be scoring more um, when you play. So Lucas is the one um, or Grant. So I like the, the versatility. He can go between both positions. Um, they're emerging. They're increasing their budget. They're continuously looking for stars and they're eager, you know, to return to the top. So what better player to have who's trying to chase something than a team that's also chasing something. I don't really want him to go somewhere where it's already established. It's already laid. I would rather him be going somewhere where he's either going to be the one who brings the culture or he's someone who's going to be one that helps push the team to get there. And I think Panathinaikos has the name, they have the tradition, they have the respect to where he can kind of expedite his process of, you know, where people see him as. And not, not that he cares, but you know, every player wants to win championships. Every player wants to put themselves in the best position to succeed. And every player likes to make money. And Panathinaikos, you know, will be paying well, but out of in there, you know, he's going to dig into those pockets. And, you know, he's going to hit up the owner and he's going to get what's necessary for Mr. James to come there. So this is just my opinion. And I think it would be a great fit for him. I do love Monaco for him, but I do think Panathinaikos gives him a better shot to win a championship, especially with the home court, with the fans, with the, the tradition, uh, the respect that they get from the referees, like you put all these things together, this makes a difference uh, in your chase uh, for greatness. To me, it's actually a pity that uh, Mike didn't play for those, let's say, traditional powerhouses with massive massive fan bases, you know, such as Pau, Olympiakos, Partizan, Zvezda, Maccabi, or Fenerbahce. And actually, his Panthinaikos era was basically the shortest among the Euroleague teams he played in, in game appearances. That was surprising to me. Uh, so I think that sometimes playing for those big teams with huge fan bases actually helps to create this narrative for those GOAT discussions, GOAT conversations mm -hmm. and, and, and whatever. And if you play for those teams with like fan bases like, you know, CSKA or even Monaco, you know, you're, you're, you're not getting the same spotlight. So, but... You know, I would love to see him playing for those teams I mentioned. But when Eric said that there's no better place than home, I actually thought that Monaco is his home, to be honest. You know, and the grass is not greener somewhere. And as the EuroLeague fan, I want as many contenders as possible. I want as many unique EuroLeague teams as possible. So those teams like Partizan, Olympiakos, Panathinaikos, they're, they're unique already. You know, they have enough money or personal to compete for uh, personal to compete for titles. Uh, and, you know, they were on the EuroLeague map and they will be th there forever. But, you know, Mike James made this Monaco team unique. And your commitment to Monaco would mean that they're instant title contenders. And the tracker record proved that, you know, game five of the playoff series in year one, final four year two. We'll see what happens in year three. And I believe that by keeping you, Monaco also kind of commits to build a strong team to compete for that title. Uh, and, you know, Mike James makes any yearly team fun to watch as soon as he wears those jerseys. And I'm not saying that Monaco wouldn't be sexy or fun to watch. Uh, who knows? Maybe they could sign Shane Larkin. He's on an expiring contract. We have guys like Keenan Evans, some some other great scorers on expiring contracts. So they could easily rebuild a Final Four contender. But to, you make fun. Uh, you make fun team to watch instantly. Uh, so I think that they would remain and broaden the list of title con uh, contenders. And what I also like that I think that Mike James is building legacy in Monaco. 
Uh, this is the first team you played for for three years. Uh, this is the team you scored the most points in the EuroLeague. Uh, this is uh, the team you actually joined before them making their EuroLeague debut. And this is the team you put on the Final Four. So, you know, you're gradually improving together. And if you manage to step by, by step eventually win the competition, that would be a hell of a dynasty. And, you know, as we said, it only takes one or two titles of Monaco to put you on the top of this GOAT conversation. So as a EuroLeague fan, I want you to stay in Monaco. And you know where I really thought? Before the news was announced that they weren't going to be expanding, I thought Mike was about to be in Dubai. <laughs> I said, "Oh yeah, they're going to come with it. They're going to come with it." But um, <laughs> and then as far as um, you know, what's being home? I feel like Monaco, in the words of um, Bane and Batman, Monaco nearly merely adopted him. He was born in Panathinaikos. <laughs> That's my my bad uh, my bad uh, imitation. But <laughs> I know Mike would appreciate that one. <laughs> hey man, I'm sticking out of this this topic. Man. <laughs> hey, I do love it at Monaco. I do. I think it's a great situation there. But I just feel like a bigger fan base, bigger media market. You know. I think it would be explosive with you and Adam in, in Athens. I mean, Twitter, media reviews, and then with the owner too. Oh, man, it would be, it'd be great. <laughs> How do you feel about your future, Mike? What do you want from your last contract? I had just a chance to win. That's all. Two? That's all I care about. Two, I three years? Work. How many years are we looking for? Uh, I mean, Probably three. Yeah, I mean, you... You deserve three that. to put me at 15 years professional. 15 years is a good career, man. Yeah. I could ride off into the sunset after that. But you're still going to be good. Why leave? <laughs> you going to leave if the game love you? <laughs> hey, man. You got to know when to hold them and when to fold them, bro. <laughs> uh, I think you got a lot more basketball left in you. I think you do. I think you. You're going to miss it, bro. You're going to miss it. Just just think about it. Shelf it. And as long as you're healthy, as long as you feel good, as long as there's nothing back home family-wise, you know, keeping you from you know, doing this, because I know it's hard. It's a big sacrifice. But if you can continue to maintain, you know, you it's a pleasure to watch you, man. I, I really enjoy it. So, you know, selfishly, I'd like to see you go a little bit longer. <laughs> hey, man. I'm going to try. I'm going to give everything I got. But we'll <laughs> That's all we can ask for. <laughs>